Welcome to the first turn. I'm your host, Hyena, and today, Lama and I talk about this weekend Warhammer. The Old World is releasing soon, and so we talk briefly about the Gear Up promotional articles and materials coming out. We talk about prepping for Adepticon 2024, which is just a few short months away, and about prepping for Golden Demon, and more. If you like what you hear, give us a like, thumbs up, subscribe, follow, or share, and let us know in the comments what you'd like to hear us talk about in future episodes. All right, let's get to it. When I go to Chicago, I can eat Lou Malnati's exactly. and, <laughs> and, uh, and whatever. Lou's, the most, the most savory yep. pie, mm-hmm. <laughs> the most savory, delicious uh, Italian casserole. And I know that there are like Chicagoans. Chicagans, people who are from there, who be like, oh no, you want to go to this one downtown, and it's like, okay, but we're not going to spend yeah. a five hour round trip doing that. <laughs> I can <laughs> take a fifteen minute drive over to Lou's yeah. in Schaumburg, and near sure Schaumburg. There's you know? a deli that's been there for 120 years, and and it's a recipe that's passed down down, and it's yeah. delicious. I'm sure I'm going to lose because it's close. Yeah, and it's delicious. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta weigh those two things. Yep. It's like I could take the train. <laughs> and then take it. It's, it's like all day thing. making an all day thing to go eat at this place, and it's probably pretty good. But it's probably very good. But Luz is very, really, very, we know it's whatever. Good. It's still good. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it's. I don't know if if the amount of increase yeah. in in enjoyability is worth that the much whole more day time. venture. Yeah. And and they sure they had a down year. There was that like yeah, that one year was that was, like, was kind of weak. Yeah, but they bounced back. The last yeah. two times we were there it was good. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, no complaints after after seeing it. Unlike some of the other places we went to that either aren't there anymore because they failed, yeah, or um, uh, are still there but are failing. Yeah, we went to uh, one of our rituals was go to the, the first night was go to Finn's Finnacool, Finnacool, yeah. which was a bar and grill technically, I think, and it uh, it just did not cut it that last time. And it was it was so unfortunate because it was like years prior we're like yeah this place is great. <laughs> Uh, we should go there. Became a staple you know, night one. A staple night one. Lots of people came last year with us. Mm-hmm. So we had a party of like 15 or 20 people. Yeah, it sounds like shaping up that way this year. And we showed up and it was like, guys, I'm really sorry. This is shit now. Like, yeah. it felt so bad to recommend it because it yeah. was so, it was so, it, like the, the menu changed and things were gone. Um, three of the four servers were just on break the whole time we were there. Yeah. And they like, when one came back, the other one la- went off. So it was only one working the entire time. Time we were there, uh, to the point where like we left, just where we were almost we we're this close to leaving. Uh, I had to walk up and pretty much refill my own drinks at the bar yeah. because just no one was coming back to our table. It was it was, it was, it was unfortunate, it was. but um, same same kind of thing. Yeah, same kind of thing though with uh, with with lose except the next year afterwards because we took someone who had not been there before. Who and happens to be a bit of a pizza aficionado. Pizza snob, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure. Uh, snob. And uh, and he was not impressed when he went right. with us. But the time after that we went, it was like, oh, man. It's th- back. Why couldn't it have been this time yeah. that he went? Because it was, it was so good. Yeah. But uh, we've got, what, three months? It's close Less now. than three months? Yeah. March 20th. 11 weeks, I think, mm-hmm. to go until Gen... Or, until Depticon. And this uh, Sunday is the registration. Yep. That's exciting. I'm I'm pumped about that. Uh, they did do uh, something that was interesting. Where they they have done their VIG every you know every single year. They do it differently now. Yeah, they can't decide. <laughs> uh, this year they're doing a limited badge run. Uh, only one tier upgraded from base badge. Yeah, and making it first come first serve. I assume plus limited number. Uh, it's not going to be as Hefty as the VIG was in previous years, right. but I assume it'll be better than premium. Sure, you know whatever, kind of in yeah. between there because they're they're limiting the number of, of people who get swag bags now. Because if you look at the total from last year, it was like yeah you know, five thousand or whatever. Now it's down to three thousand of this one tier. So I'm hoping we can get in, uh, get registered early enough this weekend to actually get one of those to see what it's about. Because I I never regret getting the. The upgraded badge, no. not not once. Like the even the hassle of carrying it around, and then your room gets the the floor in your hotel room gets packed with all this crap. It, it's still like you just get so much stuff. Yeah, it's a fun first night because because that first night when you pick up your your swag and the the vendor halls aren't open yet, you don't actually get to go and, and buy anything, and you're the only one that has stuff. stuff to look through, new stuff, and so you get to like Christmas morning look through all this bag of things you didn't know were there and mm-hmm. you know see what you can use. I love it because it just gives me fodder for like projects, yeah. right? Like I wouldn't have bought this thing X whatever it is, but 
when I've got downtime and I got a new project, and I, if I feel inspired, yeah, I'll crack into it and put something together or, you know, test it, you know, a new technique on something. Mm-hmm. I love it. And it's basically free. And, you know, <laughs> you know? and that's, that's a valuable tip, I think, not enough people think about uh, when they want to practice a painting technique or a conversion technique or sculpting or anything like that. And a lot of people, I don't think, think enough about practicing, but that becomes a valuable tool for that. When you get fodder miniatures yeah. like that, like just some that are extra thrown in, and some that are in there are nice, and maybe you don't want to try that on, but you get some that are just like, hey, here's this company's 3D print of a thing. Right. Perfect thing to try a new scheme on or technique or, or whatever. Uh, and then sometimes you get like full-blown board games. Or like last year, we got the full Kill Team set. Mm-hmm. Whatever that one. I was. didn't, because I didn't get VIG. No. But the year prior, I got the full, um, what was it, Dominion box? From, oh, yeah. For Stormcast versus... Yeah. Swamp Works, which is like, well, that's just it's like, like I paid a hundred dollars for this badge upgrade, and I got a two hundred dollar box straight off the bat, and that doesn't include you know? the other dozens of yeah, things you got exactly. And and the fact that Games Workshop throws in a lot now with that VIG makes it super worth it. I wonder though if it was like, hey guys, this is too much, <laughs> you know, or something, because there was such a disparity between the two, and then there wasn't enough available. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to like really, really rein it in, or maybe they're trying to make these limited number of them really good. And so they're not like... Maybe they're trying to also simplify their process because it creates a a weird logjam, kind of. Well, uh, speaking of leaving the logjam, this year they're also doing uh, Mail Your Badge to you. (laughs) Mail Your Badge We'll see how that turns out for their first year doing Mm -hmm. that. Because not having to pick up first night would be really, really nice. Yeah. Uh, I still kind of would want to, I think. But there becomes an issue when you've got something going on that first night where you need to get to it. You can't just sit in line for four hours. Yep. Like... If you if the line opens up at six thirty, and the GW event is at nine, yeah, there's a chance you there's miss a chance it. you just try to miss it. Which yeah. uh, I think we ran into last year because while we got down there early, it wasn't early enough. Yeah, and and then there are sometimes other events going on. Like uh, there was a content creator meet and greet that we got invited to, mm-hmm. um, which which you can't wait in line if you're going to go to that. And then there was uh, some people have classes that go on that first night and. All of that. All of that's just like. Or think about if you had an event at eight thirty the next morning on, a, on yeah, Thursday. Yeah. You well, you pretty much have to wait in line Friday or Wednesday night in order to get it. Otherwise, you don't have your badge for your event first thing in the morning. Yep. So it's it, it, in cases like that, uh, it would really really be helpful. I mean, you don't need it obviously, if especially if it's like a fifteen dollars shipping thing or something. Yeah. Maybe you can forgo it and skip it. And uh, the number of people that get theirs pre ordered means that your line experience is shorter because there's fewer people. Mm-hmm. So it, it alleviates both. Like it's both pools of people become happy, you know? Yeah. I, I but, think it's potentially, there's potential overall for the whole thing to move a little quicker if people are not getting swag and just order their badges in the mail. Yeah. Now they're not, now that line's cut by that many people. Yeah. If there's fewer people getting the big one now because they're limiting the number, there's fewer people waiting for that. But it's also, uh, yeah. with the 11 weeks going, uh, it's exciting because that means that. Our golden demon entries are ticking down. Are ticking down. Yeah. We're, we're running out of time, which means we need to finish them, mm-hmm. right? So there's there's two two sides of that coin, right? Yeah. It's it's exciting because it's getting closer, but it's also dread because it's getting closer. Yeah. We need to get it done. Uh, we were making some pretty good progress, I think, uh, this week, this Monday when we had our paint night. Yeah. Um. I mean, there were. It, it was, was mostly just the three of us there, but yeah. but yep. we but, cranked out some stuff. I mean, but we're, I think we're the only ones that are really competing. And I don't even know if I'm going to get mine good enough to actually submit anything. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but your first submission into it, yeah. I think, is because that would be your first Golden Demon, right? Yep. That's important, though, so you can find out where you are. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they offer feedback. Sometimes they're just way too overwhelmed mm-hmm. to do that. But uh, you still learn a lot at that, you know. Um, I know there's been discussions yep. <laughs> from, some, from some prominent content creators. <laughs> and I think we talked about this before about how Golden Demon is still the 3 2 1. They still do bronze, silver, gold, and it's one person for each third, second, first. And some people don't like that. They, they like that now there's all these painting competitions out there that do a so called merit based system where they give out everybody who is bronze equivalent, everybody who's silver equivalent, everybody who's gold equivalent gets a thing. They lump you into, into tier categories. Right. I mean, this is true. Tier category. They do. You're gold, you're silver, you're bronze. Yeah. And here is the best in overall. Yep. And, and Golden Demon doesn't do that, but I still they still do a form of merit-based. In the, Correct. In the form of the finalist pin. Because, I don't know, 
I don't know, 25, 30% of people in a category might get that mm -hmm. if they're good. Yep. And that's still hard because the Games Workshop Golden Demon Painting Competition is such a, a high tier because everybody who's good wants to enter it. And now you've got the European painters coming to both the North American one and going to the UK one a month later. So there's loads of entries. If you get a finalist pin, you should be proud of that. Yep. And then if you get what's called a commended, that's when you're in the when you were like a slice away from yeah. you were considered if you get committed you were considered for the trophies the trophies and you didn't make it right but you were considered and the, well because the trophy winners also get the commended yeah. badge so everybody there was in that finalist cut because they do that cut system and then it i think that adds so much prestige to the trophy winners mm -hmm. because only three get those statues it's like it's hard but that's competition and I don't think it leads to, like, bad or seething feelings towards other people. Like, well, how come this obliterator won and my whatever Dark Angels guy didn't? And, and it's like, I, I always feel the opposite. I always hear discussion. The buzz from people is the opposite. They look at what did win and they're like, how did they do that? Mm -hmm. And then you go find that painter and you talk to them if you can. Not why did they win? Why was there better? Why was there better than right. one? But it's like no, theirs was clearly better. How did they do it? And I'm sure there's. Yeah. We've seen ones where it's a, you're curious as to how the judges picked yeah. some of them, but for the most part, when you see the category winners, you're like, yep, yep. <laughs> it, it, it's like, and, and it's such a high level that I, I think right. our group at least always finds that it's inspiring. We come back from that and we just want to sink our teeth into new projects. I wish there was two Adepticons a year. Yeah. Or two Golden Demons we can participate right. in a year. You know, because that, like, that 12-month cool-off period means that we waste about eight months of it. We really do. We do. It's and, and it's it's like we get we get a burst of inspiration initially. We spend seven or eight months just, doing, like, other just doing other stuff. Yeah. And then four months out, you know, we panic. November, <laughs> you know, we are like, oh, crap, it's coming. Uh, we panic to get it rushed and get it done. And so it's like, we don't have unlimited time to just yeah. paint all the time. So... And, so, and, and in one. today's day and age, you have some of those folks who are just full-time content creators who get to paint, and that's all they do. And that's awesome. But that gives them a leg up in terms of their experience, their technique. Yep. The... Not that it's unfair, because you could nope. do that. Yep. Uh, anyone could do that. Spend, just take time off of actual, no offense, real work, <laughs> Yeah. and just do content creation stuff. Like, you could just take time off and, and just paint. You don't, mm -hmm. you know, like, anyone technically could do it. They have the advantage of like also being able to maintain lifestyle yeah. while doing it. Yeah, it's and also then, become their livelihood. And and then can spend that much time getting better. Which, you know? which gives them uh, not only the amount of time they can pour into a model, but putting putting paints on palettes, mixing paints, mm -hmm. putting paint to model over and over and over again, that much time makes anybody better. And so they're also always honing their craft to where a lot of stuff, they don't even have to work on so much as decide how and when to use it. Mm -hmm. um, their techniques are just going to be so refined and you also over time gain speed. So you might put 200 hours in to a model, but when they put 200 hours in a model, it's different. They can get a whole lot more done in 200 hours than I could, mm -hmm. you know? So that's, that's a, uh, and, and that's the competition now. So that's why I think if somebody goes and they get a finalist pin, there's your merit badge, but you should also be really proud that you've reached finalist pin. Right. Because of you're going against that. Agreed. So that's exciting, but yes, we are now in crunch time. There's, there's at least uh, you, myself, Moose, all working on stuff. We've got a couple it. other folks that I know that are trying to submit. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen it yet. <laughs> nope. Committing to it, but uh, we might have a, a handful of different entries. So we on. know there's at least a lot of uh, our local folks going mm -hmm. to Adepticon. This might be the biggest Adepticon year for us locally. Yeah. The most number of people we know going in one group really because yeah. we always see people there that we didn't know yeah. were also going you're like yeah. oh hey you know yeah i didn't know you were coming to this yeah. um i like at gen con same same deal mm -hmm. we see people there all the time that are like oh you came to this cool you know uh but but adepticon is so it's so laser focused on miniatures yep. that it's like it's it's a surprise if you see someone that you know from your you know mm -hmm. know from home there and you didn't know they were coming so like we know everyone who's going, it's and it's a, it's quite a few people. It's it's a few dozen. You know what surprised me is I've interacted with a few folks uh, through my uh, Instagram um, who do miniatures, and it was like I was asking them like a question about something they painted. Like someone did a really cool eye on a dragon. I wanted to know. And I was like, oh, are you going to be at Adepticon then in March? And they're like, what's Adepticon? And uh, I'm just gonna say that surprises me yeah. that anyone, at least in North America, who works with miniatures 
is not familiar with what is the largest miniatures convention right. in the country. Um, and, and so accessible, because Chicago's a place a lot of people can get to. Also, it's like, this is where Golden Demon is. Like, yeah. what do you... I asked you about a GW model. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean you don't know what Golden Demon is? Or what Adepticon is, the, the hosting platform, yeah. you know, like... At the very least, they have, like, Citadel paints in their picture or something. Right. And it's like, well, so yeah. you know the... You know. Wild. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it's being embroiled in the hobby so deeply. I mean, it, it's... It's a little unfair to assume everyone else is in as far as we are, <laughs> you know. But yeah. sometimes it's like it's something like that where it's like, come on, <laughs> yeah. you know. It just always surprised me. Yeah. And I'll hear about conventions they get to, and but they're more like Gen Con or they're general gaming. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it always surprises me a little when it's like you don't go to the miniatures one though. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Uh, speaking of miniatures, <laughs> so we've been about speaking about miniatures this whole time. Uh, this week we've had. Uh, uh, Mediocre news, we'll call it that. Right, it's been the old world. It's been the old world. I, yeah. mean, you get, I get it, right? Yep. Old world is, is being released. They need to explain every aspect of it. Uh, I I tried to watch their preview demo game okay. of old world, and it's they need to take like twice as long to explain things. Okay, twice as long. Because they, they try to wrap up the game in like 45 minutes, and while explaining concepts that nobody knows. It was, it was, it felt very rushed, very, very edited, very skipped through sort of preview game. Well, and I'm sure they, they, they can't put a three hour video up. So maybe I don't they know why to, they can't. Because I don't know how many people would sit. I think what they make need to it, do this make it in parts. Episodes. You know, yeah, like yeah. here's the game. Here's part one, two, and three yep. uh, that go through the game. Here's rounds one and two. Here's rounds three and four. Here's rounds yeah, here's your army Whatever. selection. Here's your set deployment. Right. Yeah. And then uh, cause like it, it, they need to spend more time showing that game. Old world is going to be a long game to play. Just yeah, like is. fantasy was. Yep. It was a three or three and a half, four hour long game. Yep. It is a long game because there's so, so much fiddly bits and there's so much measuring. There's so much, you know, just useless dice. There, like there's a lot to do in that game. Rank and, and flying. And so, uh, yeah, it was trying to wrap it up in 45 minutes was like it did not give a great feel mm -hmm. for what the game was like. Um, but it's 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 launch of the game is coming here very Real shortly. Like, this weekend, like two weeks from now is when it's released. Um, which led us to speculate. Which, which yeah, which which means the timeline is looking like maybe fourth ed a AOS. AOS this summer. I know there were rumors. I mean, it's always there's always rumors, right? Every year, uh, yep. sometimes rumors are unfounded. Sometimes there are is credence. Some there's there are, there are you know um, po you know um, prevalent rumor mongers who say things and they're they have more weight behind their right. words. Um, but there was something. Sometimes it just feels like wish listing. You know, yeah. It's like, dear Santa, I would like <laughs> this. Um, a lot of it's logic, yep. right? Yep. So there's some logic behind the timing of things. It's like, well, third ed of AOS was two years ago. They've gotten through a refresh on all of their battle tomes. They're done now. Already. There's yeah. no new armies on the docket. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no new releases besides like intermittent ones from campaigns or you know, whatever they decide to do, uh, which means that it feels about time for them to do a new edition and start yep. the book process over again. That's not how it goes, right? Uh, but it, it seems like with Old World coming out, and most of 40K is, I mean, it's just new, but, like, we know where it's going through the summer. But 10th is still new. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, we know the, the timeline of, of when things are coming out for 40K. Yeah. Uh, it seems like there, there might be a big, you know, time slot right around summer for a, yeah. big, a big release. You know, um, like, with them getting Old World out of the way, they get Epic out of the way. That was, yep. you know, a month ago. Yep. What else is there that would take up a lot of time? Right. Horse Heresy? No. No, they just launched a new edition I know. of Horse Heresy. They just did that. So it's like, what else is there? It's the one I can think of, right? Uh, and then the rumors, the specifics is where it's like, eh. I, I fully expect there would be a big release for AOS this summer. They always seem to do it in the summer, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a campaign or, you know, five-part campaign like we've got going on they now. They did that with Leviathan. Which, which isn't done day. yet, by the way. Uh, or a new edition, there's going to be a big thing in the summer for AOS. Um, the specifics, though, I'm, that's I, I, I feel like be, 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 yeah, yeah. that's where the rumors come in. It's like, could be anything. Uh, part of it, like I said, is is credible lies or uh, or just, uh, just wild guesses based on something logical, right? So 
Skaven has a lot of old models. Yep. We would love to see, see a Skaven model refresh. And I would have. They're not in old world, right? I would have loved to see it happen. Third edition, early third edition AOS, but it didn't happen. And so it's like, well, if it didn't happen then, maybe it'll happen now. Wouldn't it be cool if Skaven were in the 40k or Jesus, were in the AOS fourth edition release box? Yeah, that would be cool. Rumor becomes. They're going to be in the fourth, the fourth edition release box. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's this weird jump that gets like, yeah. hey, wouldn't that be nice to be like, oh, it is going to be a thing now. It's like confirmed. This person said it. I don't buy it. Correct. Um, I don't think they're in the know anyway. Correct. And yeah. but now jumping to logic, like mm-hmm. you pointed out, is one of the the things. They're they're the model line in either game system, and I know there's going to be Eldari players out there. They're better mating aspect. Where- not even close. Not, not even Bother close. Off. Not even close. I know. To Skaven. What Skaven need. <laughs> How old their line is. But you want to talk about a way to get a whole bunch of them refreshed quickly. Starter box. Yep. You, you can have your... You can have four infantry kits in there, a monstrous infantry kit, a new vehicle thing, characters. Like, you can pack all that in there because Skaven eat up no points. No. Yep. And <laughs> if you're going to do a 750 points per side thing or whatever, you, you can get a bunch of Skaven out of the way. And then you can release their battle tome shortly after with the rest of it, yeah. like with the other half. Which is what they've been doing. They've been on track to yeah. do that kind of thing. I mean, hell, we don't even have um, most of the release stuff for Flesh Eater Flesh Ports. Ports. Yeah, we don't have like all the different, four different characters that they, they're yeah, coming out with. Uh, uh, there was a kit, another kit that was missing, wasn't it? Maybe it says four kits and a monster, which is Usheron. Four characters and a monster. Um, but then those kits on, the, on their own too, later mm-hmm. in the line. Um, same sort of deal. You know, like Flesh Eater Quartz, if they were to make a proper army, they need some expansion. Here you go. Here it is. Um, Slaves of Darkness, they did that. Here's yep. some refreshed kits. Here's some new stuff. There you go. Uh, and, they, and they split it up kind of in two. Correct. And, yeah, and, two different ways. And I could see kit, uh, Skaven getting a similar treatment. You knock out a bunch of old kits. You you just cut stuff you don't plan on making. Lizardmen. Same yep. Same exact yeah. thing. Lizardmen was, might have been the biggest release for AOS this year. Yeah. Last year. It had to be. Uh, and it was the most needed because it replaced so many old models. Yep. It cut some stuff that didn't need to be there anymore. Here's a refresh for the core army exactly. stuff. Um, but Skaven, well, it has a big roster. It, most of it is old. Some of it can get cut. Some of it can get refreshed. Yep. But but there are so many AOS armies that need attention. More Which, so than like, let's do a new Lumineth temple. Again, right. Or a new, a new uh, you know, Stormcast, uh, chamber. Stormcast <laughs> chamber. Like, yeah. we don't need more of those. While they might be popular armies and be lots they of people buying yeah. them, whatever. Like, there are armies like Flesh Eater Courts, who had a small roster. Got some. Or, like, uh, Fire Slayers, who, oh my god, their roster is so tiny. They need some expansion. You know, yeah. or uh, uh, Ideneth Deepkin need to expand their army. And we realize, listeners, that we touch on this Almost every week. I know. <laughs> but, but, but it's but it's it's a thing, right? Yep. And when rumors come out, it's like, no, nothing for them. It's like, why not? You know? Like, I, I would be surprised, I'll say that, if if they went a full edition and then a second, another edition, and didn't give Skaven that, mm-hmm. like, ugh. Yeah. Well, and like you said, we know they're not being, uh, it's not one of those armies that's like, well, we're not giving you any attention because you're going back to old world. They Even chose, though right. Lizardmen, Skaven, who are two that aren't getting going back, are so unique for that yep. kind of a setting. Yeah. In, a, in, a, in a setting like Old World, which is a, call it borrowed inspiration yeah. uh, kind of world, yeah. where it's very much based on Tolkien. Uh, real world. Yeah. Uh, Warcraft yep. inspiration. Even though they borrow from each other. Um, but it's that. But, it, but it's that kind of thing. Yep. It's like uh, I mean, Nippon, Ind, uh, Cathay, like all these places are just, okay, this is Japan, Indian. And, right. Yeah, and then oh, here's the Mongolian, you, yep. know, you know, like it's so based on our, even like the locations of them are just based on yeah. our, our, try. our planet. Um, it's like these things were unique. The Skaven aren't anything, right? They're not inspired by anything in real life. No. Nope. The lizard men are so, are so wild. Like they're, they're not based on something. I mean, they, they you get know? the Aztec, Mayan, Incan sure, motifs. Maybe, maybe in terms of like, yeah, the motifs. But but if we're trying to say that they are, they're they're like their structure for how their their society works is based on the Mayans. I, I mean, no, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't think so. And then, and and the fact that you have that whole like the, these 
almost ethereal beings in the in the slan mm -hmm. who are the only ones who've communicated with a now non-existent race of celestials from <laughs> eons ago and and then the the like leader class is, is like these skinks who 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 help breed in the pools and like who right. can communicate with everybody but the lizards can't and then you got dinosaurs and now it's such a cool idea for that setting but that could also be why they're they're not making it because I think by calling it the old world, they're really focusing on that center portion of the map. Correct. Because technically, the, the that part of like Lustria and something like that is called the new world. Correct. The new world of the old world. Yes. Old world refers to specifically this like Europe, Northern Africa yep. sort of area. It's, it's we're not the, talking about we're not talking about most of the elves, the high elves, and the, the dark elves it's complex the, uh, and all that. The Mediterranean and Middle East. Right. It's the ancient world, like yeah. you know, Babylon or right. Assyria, and so that makes sense, but. But then they gave us our two unique ones in AOS. Seraphon got their massive update, which showed their commitment to AOS. Mm -hmm. We saw Skaven wasn't on their roster of nine for Old World. They're getting legends. So, like, that means they've got so, it. So show me the commitment to Show AOS, me the commitment then. to keep them in AOS. Yep. Right. Let me see some more models. Let me see an update to one and Even model. if they don't just, re, like, update a bunch of old ones, mm -hmm. Seraphon got some stuff that was just brand new. Yeah. And so we could see that. You know, a whole new... AOSified Skaven. Yep. I wouldn't even be surprised if they got new clan rats like they got new Soros warriors. Like, those clan rats are pretty old. Why not? At least 12 years old yeah. at this point. I think because they, they did do a re sculpt of the plastic ones after Isle of Blood. Well, and, and I know. And like, I think it's like a 2009 kind of thing. And I know they're like sort of polearm yeah. shield guys. The, 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 the Storm Vermin. Storm Vermin, yeah. But that's like one of their newest infantry kits, and that's not young. Yeah, it doesn't feel it doesn't no. feel great, <laughs> especially when you see like the the, the underworld's warbands for Skaven and how dynamic a lot of those guys are. It's like, oh man, they could do so much with with just rank and file and, infantry. And we've seen the popularity of the core infantry getting updated. I mean, Necron Warriors got it, Termagant's Harmagant's got it. Like, geez, do it. like they they took a lot of these kits that have been around for a long time. Well, I think maybe they've realized that. That even though you have a core infantry kit that exists, you do need to put some effort into refreshing every once in a while. Yeah, as soon as you know, like when their technology and their design and everything gets better, it's like and even something as simple as the way their plastic pumps out now, they can not only fit more on a sprue, they can design it so you have less of the ugly mold lines and mm -hmm. so it's like why not? Um, yeah, it's like so many of their sprues are no longer just like grids. No. There's so many like wiggly lines that like fit pieces in pieces that that in their dimension don't even make sense on the sprue yeah <laughs> You're like how did they get that on there but point being i could see either a big part one box followed by releases like flesh eater quartz goddard or you include a bunch of them in the starter set for an aos4 yep. like tyranny's got with a well, look at cities of sigmar that was a gigantic release Same. of new yeah. stuff and then in addition to their army box plus the stuff that came out afterwards they also tied in a war cry war band into the army proper at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, maybe do that. Which, as an aside, I think that's how, that's a part of how they're going to supplement Kroot. Okay. Is they got a kill team yep. thing, and then now whatever they add to them with the Tau Codex, it's like, th that's a good way to... Yeah. So you have you have your carnivores, you've got your whatever the new ones are called. Are, yeah. Well, you have the, the, the kill team one with, that has like the crossbow yep. and stuff. That's technically not, not the same unit. It's a new unit. There's yeah. two different Kroot units now. Uh, you had the character from Blackstone Fortress, mm -hmm. which I would just use as a shaper, yep. whatever. Uh, and then we, we have these crew cavalry, which which I think... Did you look at those photos I sent you? Yeah. Okay. So like someone had, on the internet, taken those those video stills mm -hmm. and put them through like a Photoshop filter to brighten them up. Right. And so... Because it turns out they were just very low lit, not <sighs> right out. Or yeah. like the, the darkness, or the, like the lighting was just turned down on them yep. so that they were just silhouettes, which you can get away with if it's a photo. Mm -hmm. You can, like, take Photoshop and create a silhouette of a thing. Right. That way, no matter how much you turn the brightness up, it's still just a black yeah. space. Two-dimensional. Yeah. But with a video, you can't do that. And so all the sills of the video could just be turned back up, and we can very, very clearly see now that it's an orc mech. It's a Custodes with yeah. the same kind of, what we were talking about before, the winged, like, hussar crest. Thing crest. Head. Coming, yeah. It was coming, like, from his, like, his waist and the back mm -hmm. up over his head, and he's got... You know, his head almost looked to me a little bit like um, Alpharius's helmet, which I think was it. No, 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 I'm not saying that there's a connection, but it, it seemed like that to me where he had like a, a like a big prominent ridge in the center of the mm -hmm. helmet with like, I don't know, almost like, you not unicorn, but like almost like aquatic 
sort of crest kind of on the helmet and then like filigree on the sides. Yeah. Um, but it was very clearly like guardian spear, shield, yeah. custodian's armor. Like it's definitely a custodian's model. And then the crew, you can, you can definitely see if you, if the dreadnoughts, the spiky dreadnought didn't give it away. Like the light up that they gave it, like you can see his whole face and his chest. Like, it's a crew. Yeah. <laughs> so we were we were we were on with those three. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. think that was a that was a big no. Uh, um, pat yourself on the back, kind of guess. They were pretty obvious, but just it's just a little confirmation is nice, you know. But uh, like as far as like when they go to do Skaven, it's like they could have a Warcry Warband come out between now and then. Yep. Uh, they could have a character or something come out during this campaign, and then if you do a big starter box like Leviathan, where you, you put a whole bunch of easy to snap fit updates mm-hmm. in there and then you supplement that with a handful of kits it's like just like that skaven would have a whole refresh of their line yeah. they'd feel aos you'd be broke mm-hmm. but you because <laughs> you would buy so many of them but well i mean all of all the stuff i've got i would you know anything they've replaced i'd have to get i'd, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd have to replace thing. it same, same with your tyrannids like i'd have to just replace all, all my guns stuff. and jeep stealers i have yeah. i have like 120 clan rats and i'd have to replace them all you know what i mean like and there's and there's some stuff like your your kit that makes the plague for a screaming bell doesn't sure. have to change the right. doom wheel whatever doesn't have to change those are plastic they don't look bad the storm fiends are new yep. enough because they were all end times yep thankful bone ripper they same don't thing. need a thankful yeah, yeah. Well, great looking kit doesn't it need to be a bomb whatever but like you have so many things that it's oh. like they, well and but it they can do it and it doesn't come from like the most of the plastic right it's it's the um it's the not been touched weapon teams yeah you know they're all metal yep. Yep. it's it's the it's the Giselle teams mm-hmm. it's the uh, the acolytes, or fire throwers, the, those, yeah. Th- yeah, all those kids are just so old. And then like your core four plague units, like they've got pl- old plague monks that are plastic, but like the sensor bearers, uh, the only which, way you can which get here sensor bearers are pretty popular now. They're pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the only way you can get a plague priest is if you buy the uh, the chariot kit and don't build it as a plague priest. <laughs> That's where you get your plague priest from. Like yeah. it's just it's so much stuff like that where it's like. There needs to be a, a, a separate kit for all this yeah. stuff in order to actually do it. And, and I'm okay with any uh, trimming they have to do. And then, oh, and let's not even talk about Clan Eshin. Yeah, right. Who, who all of their non characters are either metal or just that old, I don't know, second ed plastic where they're just like chunky. They've got like alligator heads. Like, <laughs> they don't make any sense. They're so bad. I've got so many of those old gutter runners. They're, oh, they're awful. But, but I could, I could see it ending up, you know, that, that could definitely be a way they do them. Mm-hmm. I think we see the commitment to it since they keep them around in things like Underworlds and, and in the story and they were not on the old world roster was the biggest tip. Yeah. So it might give some validity to what is currently just a rumor about when AOS 4 comes, which yep. may be late this summer, Skaven get a great big thing. It would be super cool. Um, the other rumor would be that they'd be facing off against Stormcast, which, I mean, everyone always does, mm-hmm. right? Every new edition is, is... It's like how Marines end up in every correct. 40K edition. Yeah. Yeah. You'll never see like an Eldar versus or Gene Stealer cults, yeah. you know, a starter box. It's like, it won't happen. Mm-hmm. Nope. Um, and so Sigmarines are going to be against something, probably, if there's a starter box versus like that. Uh, but we've also heard rumors about that too, right? Like there's there's thoughts that maybe this new uh, you know armor design style is going to filter through to some of the old models. Um, we've seen that they're they're revisiting first dead stuff, right? So do you we, think that's like going to be seven years ish ago now? Yeah, and so like one of the characters that they redid, well, I guess a couple of characters actually have been kind of redone. Uh, if you look at the original Celestant. Hammer Ray's sword, mm-hmm. uh, Hammer Cloak, was kind of re-sculpted as a named character for yeah. uh, the Hallowed Knights. The guy doing the hero pose. Gardas yeah. Steel Song. Yep. That's almost like a re-sculpt of that model. Um, they did Ionis, which he was the original Lord Relector on foot. They did him on a dragon, carried over the name. You know, like, that's basically a re-sculpt from a first edition starter box, you know, kit. There are rumors that they're going to do Vandis, who was the original... Um, Lord riding on the Drakoth. Yep. They could do something with him, you know. But that makes me wonder, it's like, well, what other First Dead stuff are they going to touch then? Are they going to do something cool with, uh, what's his name? The the corn guy? Corgus? Oh, Corgus Corgus Cole? cool. I'd love to see something happen with Corgus. I know he's still alive. He reappeared in some recent fluff. Yeah. And he's, he's, he used to be a focal point of, like, the Grand Gate War story. Yep. Uh, yeah. So there were, there were three characters... Four characters in that starter box for uh, Bloodbound, which was him. It was the Slaughter Priest, who 
who was the original Lurch with the axe. The Blood Secretor. Yep, the Blood Secretor, which was the guy with the, the blood, banner. The Blood Stoker. Blood Stoker, which is old, old Whip. Trident Hand. Yep. Whippy Trident Hand. Uh, yeah. And so, like, maybe those characters will get some kind of love and some kind of, like, you know, be brought back into the story and get new new um, kits that, like, in- invoke the old, the feel of the old kit. You know, like, there's potential there. We, we know Games Workshop, we say this all the time, Games Workshop has been on a real nostalgia trip recently for a lot of their updates. They're, yeah. they're pulling from old old codexes, they're pulling from old supplements stuff to give us new kits that really pull on those strings for new, for you know, for the old players, but also satisfy the new players with beautiful new models. New models, yeah. You know? And so, like, I could absolutely see something happening mm. with, um, you know, Liberators and Paladins and Judicators, whatever, the original box set of guys getting re-sculpted in we were able to kind of the yeah. Thunderstrike armor, which we saw them in with uh, Realms of Ruin, mm-hmm. and getting, like, some kind of new box set of them with a new way to acquire those models, plus maybe one or two of the old models well, re-sculpted. And if, well, and if they're... Um, and let's say you did a starter set, and it included them versus Skaven. Mm-hmm. You, you, they'll obviously have stuff that's just, for Stormcast, that's just brand, brand new. But if they did a new take on the Liberator, new take on a Paladin, new take on a couple of the old characters, you could have those in the box yeah. like, right there. Uh, that's an easy that's an easy way to fill that that space. Big time. Oh, you know, I would kill for some, like, action pose, like, dual sword Liberators, like, charging. Yeah, kind of like how, you know, the old Neve model is. The old one where she was, like, knee up, double right. axes. Right. Like, where she's, like, mid-run. But, like, I want to see some more, like, action-y sort of, like... And they might like, maybe the liber- Liberators are getting a little, like, in the reforging, yeah. are getting a little, like, bestial. Like, well, they're getting more f- savage. Well, and you know? a little more warlike. And, yeah. um, and, you know, I also think with the original, if we remember, when the first Age of Sigmar models came out, and the end times had completed, Games Workshop was in that weird phase where they still really hadn't opened up much communication-wise with the people. They were still under Kirby... Where they were like model company, not a game company, mm-hmm. and the first AOS stuff it didn't have rules, and I think the Stormcast reflected that simplicity that they wanted. Yeah, because a lot of the liberators in particular were just a static. They're just so mono shield forward, hammer back. Pose. They're, yeah, they're just like, like they're so, so stoic and just like clearly standing still. And, and their fluff has evolved mm-hmm. for Stormcast, and and we've seen their even their model design, and so that army, uh, while it has way more stuff than every other AOS army, they're also they've also been the beta. Have been the test ground for for an aesthetic, but they've been a they've been embraced. It's been embraced as an as a symbol of Warhammer. Now, as we besides see statues, just an we see the hammer, yeah, the Liberator hammer in yeah. uh, icons, in banners, in you know in everywhere. Even in just like Sigmar's lightning bolt is yeah. just a thing now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I could see them giving them a facelift. I mean, they did that to Space Marines every few editions. They, Yep. You'd have a perfectly fine plastic and they just update it. Well, like, what was it? Back in the 8th edition, so whatever, 5, 6 years ago now, they, they just released just a new Devastator kit yeah. out of nowhere. Yep. And I was like, oh, these look way better. Mm-hmm. They're a little bulkier, but they're still, you know... Details first, super first, sharp. First born, mar- yeah. or first founding Marine size, yeah. but but they were still just bigger. Their weapons were, looked a little bit better. Yep. That kind of thing. Like, yep. Yeah, why not just give a little little facelift? Yep. And, and the, the Tac Marine kit got updated like every three editions yeah. for a while until they went Primaris. So yeah, I could, which technically, I mean, I'd call that still attack Marine upgrade. It's still attack Marine upgrade. <laughs> until, is. I mean, not until they, they officially decide like, Hey, attack Marines, you're actually, you are gone. Yeah. Well, and, they, and they've been slowly dropping the but word they, Primaris from they stuff. Do, did they do that already? Attack Marines still in? I think they are. Maybe the only like first founding Marines that are still, I don't know. I think, I think they're still in them. They're the still non primaris. Like, it's them and Devastators and. Centurions or not. Centurions. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think Centurions, they're, they're trying to say it's ambiguous. Right. Because it's kind of like, like Terminators yeah. are ambiguous. The Scouts are primaris scale, but it's still a little ambiguous. I don't know. Well, they were able to get away with it with uh, uh, Terminators and Centurions being ambiguous because they were already supposed to be larger right. but when they made new primaris that were scaled correctly it was like oh yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it's still clear that it's like yeah. there are tactical marines and there are intercessors yep. that are not the same unit no so it's like okay there are still tacticals around yep some chapters haven't given them up or retired them or no. whatever they'll get there they'll get there <laughs> yep i'm all yeah. for it yeah me too i mean literally some band-aids and whatnot yep i'm all for that so what are you uh 
speaking of old world and you know all that's out of the way, um, what are you working on for your your Golden Demon uh, submission? Well, I had been working on that Dark Oath Chieftain, for okay. a long time. and that was the the event exclusive model. Yep. Who has a name? I'm sure, but he is a double weapon, double, double, axe, double axe wielding. You know, dark Barbarian. earth. Yeah, true. Bar- uh, almost reminds me of one of the like, maybe even like directly pulled from one of the episodes. Uh, he, uh, maybe, maybe? From, yeah. Like, from I, I, like really. thinking back, I think there's a like a, there is a horseman character when they go in one of the episodes, and like, there's a guy riding a horse that looks just like. I think this when guy. they released him, you know? he had a name. Uh, I know he's got. He came with a couple different heads. He came yep. with a young okay. head and then an old head. Um, I went with the old grizzled man head because I'd seen everybody else do the other mm-hmm. one. And uh, he's been a joy to paint now that he's mostly done. <laughs> okay. I look now at, that he's done, I enjoy painting. <laughs> now, that he's like, now that he's like getting to that stage where I'm fine working on the rest of the piece until I need to see if I have to touch up anything. Now I look at him and I'm really happy with what he's got going. But uh, it, ended up, it ended up a harder process than I thought because I, I, didn't, I didn't plan it great in terms of his like, color scheme or... or what effect I wanted on him. Well, I don't think you, you thought he was going to be your, your competition piece. When he started. When you started, no, yeah. You know? Like, you, you set him up so that he could be because you, you didn't assemble him. You, had, le- him in, you his, had him in pieces. One of his arms off, yeah. Yeah, and that, but it was a, a piece that, like, really covered up yeah, detail. Cross so you needed him. to have yeah. it off. Um, but then I think you, you, th- you thought it was going so well that it's like, okay, I can push Maybe this. Maybe I could, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's just, but, he, but he's kind of the focal point of your, your entire piece because you're doing maybe more than one model. Correct. We know you are. It's a, there's, yep. a, there's at least a dog. Assuming I get them done, yep. there will be more than one model. Uh, the dog I've been working on, um, now that piece comes from the Warcry box set that had the, the Cities of Sigmar hunter humans mm-hmm. and the Ogre Kingdom's gorgers. Uh, and the detail on those is just fantastic, but I picked a human and a dog that I liked. Uh, for the dog, so I had never really like free-handed fur. I mean, GW models, a lot of times with fur, have that very chunky triangular fur on there. But there's just no real way to sculpt fur that looks like hair. Right. Unless maybe you're doing like a like a, a shoulder mantle. Yep. To, to like reflect what how GW sculpts theirs. Yeah. Like I think you can, you can kind of mimic that to like blend things. Yeah. Right? And, and they put like fur cloaks on stuff and, and that is a very particular look. Yeah, but um, most animals, when they've got like a pelt mm-hmm. that's still attached... They don't sculpt all that hair. So you'd end up just looking like a poodle. You know, mm-hmm. like you, you just had got shaved. And, yeah, yeah. So like it would it would be too weird if they sculpted so much hair. There's like tufts and stuff on on like shoulder blades where mm-hmm. like the, the hair would not Stand be laying bit, flat. Yeah. So they sculpt that part. But like yep. for the most part, it's just a smooth animal. Yeah. And um and by his shape, a lot of people aren't that familiar with the breed, and I say this as someone who's not even a dog person. Mm-hmm. His his shape and form and musculature looks like a dog of Argentino, and and it's a very particular dog that used to be used to hunt mountain lions. Um, very powerful dog, very well behaved, loyal dog. But in a fight, it is just the shit. Knows what it's doing. Mm. That's what this model looked like. But since I had debated putting it uh, in a kind of snowy scene or a cold scene, I didn't think the color scheme for a dog of Argentino, which is almost exclusively white or off white. Uh, was going to work on there. He just wouldn't stand out. And so I thought, well, whatever. Took some liberties. Mm-hmm. Looked at like some Doberman and Rottweiler, that, that black and rusty. I think it's convincing enough as like a Rottweiler. Yep. It's and, got a big, thick head, big, yeah. thick neck. Yeah. Like, and, and so choosing that scheme, I think, fit well with what I wanted. And then the issue was, do I just want to paint him kind of smooth? Or do I want to try to do what I haven't done, which is freehand hair? And so, I mean, I've even freehanded hair. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and, and it's like one thing to freehand, like, I, I think I freehanded stuff where it's like longer. Um, but I was like, well, I want him to look sleek, short fur. So I had to think of that when I was developing the pattern. And so the first thing I had to go for was like volumetric. I had to figure out the, the ambient light on the thing. Then I had to focus on how it would affect the detail. So I've got these areas where there's curves on him where the light bounces off what is his sort of blackish fur and then a sort of rusty fur and it's got a crossover between them but then make the hairs look short. Um, I think so far I've achieved that. Uh, A lot of people have given that one really positive feedback, the dog. Uh, And then I think I'm going to put on a poll maybe and see if people want to name it. 
because mm. um, we'll give him a name or fun. something. Yeah. Because I thought about in the scene, um, if it goes the way I want, I might have a caption that I, that I put on on a plinth or whatever it's on, and the guy who's with him, they're tracking uh, a murderer or someone who's been raiding their carts or caravans or whatever, and and he's going to say something like the dog's name. Um, I think we're on the trail, and then says like, "What is it, boy? Or what is it, girl?" And then like mm-hmm. go from there. But the name, I might, I might pull the folks and see what what to name the dog. It's yeah. a fun. That's fun little little uh, you know community interaction. Yep. You know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I'm hoping this all goes towards a uh, now diorama and duel are in the same category. Sure. Uh, you don't need to like really make. You don't really need to differentiate between the two anymore. No. And and um, there was like a, a good thing that happened, but a double edged sword that I think prompted that. For one, they've they've added categories. Well, I, I know I know some ex- some exact examples. Yeah. where we've seen like, eh, this is skirting a really line, dual. right? So I'm I'm kind of glad they they combined the two because I can yeah. think of of uh, at least two examples where people won in category placements, mm-hmm. and it was a questionable whether they should have been in that category at all. Right. You know. Um, we had the uh, the beautiful Mangler Squig from Sergio Calvo. From Sergio yeah. Calvo. I, I can't knock that model. No, it's amazing. spectacular. However, this is my butt. I'm not, I'm not knocking the model. The paint job's great. Yep. But it was in the wrong category. Yeah, it was, it was a dual riding a squig. And dual it's just chasing yeah, a human. was supposed to be defined as two equal, powerful. Uh, combatants fighting one another, yeah. and it was a guy running in fear from a from a mangler squig. Yeah. Was not dual. This no. was telling a story, yeah. and so it should have been maybe in a in a diorama or something, or or even it could have been just in large single large category. Yeah, yeah. and this was just a base detail, mm-hmm. you know. So the fact that it it placed in this uh, this category of dual meant that it, it really pointed out like a flaw in that. In that category. Or even like you had one that was great, but it was in diorama when it should have just been in single. Because it was just a, a gene sealer called Magus with a little bit of basing details yeah. in the background. But somehow it was called a diorama. I mean, you put it in diorama because you already had a single. Yeah. But um, if you simplify the categories, then everything kind of fits where it needs to be. You, you were kind of knocked some points because yep. they said, well, it was in the wrong category. Yeah, they, well, if it was a more broad category, then you wouldn't broad. have knocked those points. Well, and they they and they loved uh, they loved the piece. Right. They said they actually struggled with it because they're like, you you're telling a story here. Yeah. Uh, the paint job's great. The little mood you made was great because it's in this sewer underground, like mm-hmm. the jeans store. They don't live in lavish places. They live underground, right? And and then I had the little the little familiar guy behind the wall, like tracking her. And so they were like, it tells a story because it could almost be a duel. Mm-hmm. Like who's really in control? It could be single mini because it really just features her. Yeah. Uh, or you put it in diorama, but it's actually too small. They to actually said that. It's like yeah. it, it, so it doesn't show enough of a story. So I think that that plus Sergio winning with yeah. this thing and well, and then there was another example of um, I guess it's totally dual, but it was like like a chaos cultist fighting a custodian. Yeah. And it looked like the custodian was losing and like Somehow. kind of fell back and like accidentally stabbed Did the, the, the cultist idea, on, a, yeah. on a spear. And it's just like uh, another one telling a story, but I, I, I don't think that one placed, if I recall correctly. But it was like in concept, it was a little like, I don't know. Uh, a cultist has a little zero off. chance right. against a custodian. Exactly. Under, even if it catches him by surprise, Doesn't even it's just not happening. You smash you, you you smash a custodian of the head with your weapon. He's just going to turn around and grab you. And little strength three guy. Yeah, he's yeah. just going to turn around like yeah. what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then uh, was there another diorama that didn't do great? Well, there was one that ended up like in uh, single or large that people thought should have been a diorama. Oh, it was, it was the in, um, it was the Necron. It was the Necron one. Yeah, it where was he's the, emerging from a temple. It was uh, Caesaris. Yeah. Where he was, where it was, it was a great piece. It was, but it was on like it was on like a ten inch wide, yeah. like plate, and they had painted on these like light lines from the light coming out of the the portal behind him. Mm-hmm. Show like had this really striking like angular illumination on the ground, yep. and he was kind of coming out of it. But it was like way too large. It's like this is you've you've made a diorama for this. Yeah, guy. you you made a, this shouldn't have been single. Even anymore, though there's one lot on there, you you built a scene for him. Right. Because uh, he even painted the shadow of him on the back, exactly coming through the, yeah. the it was a monolith or a temple, and but yeah, it was like 
and he got an award in that category because it looked great. Yeah. But that's another one where it's like, well, that really yeah, should have been a, a diorama. Cool category. Uh, yeah. And so they, they cleaned up some stuff by even Horace Heresy, its own category. That was huge because there's so many uh, so many submissions that were just Primarchs. You Primarchs, know, it's like... Primarchs or Forgeable Dreadnoughts or yeah, like... exactly. So there's one that people still have a question about is because Large Monster is its own category mm-hmm. or Vehicle Monster is now a category. Does that include Forge World? Does that include Forge World? Does that go to Horse Heresy? Yeah. So there's still always going to be... They can never get it right. I mean, yeah. if you make too many granular categories, you're going to have categories where there's only two entries and then other ones where there's a hundred and like, how do yeah. you... So, uh, but they, you know, they gave Blood Bowl its own... Which I think is huge. That's that's a good Cause, one because that one there were so many units that were just Blood Bowl teams, right? Or um, they did uh, ne- Necromunda and, o- and Underworlds and stuff like all these different like sub games have their own categories now. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like okay, so now you're not going to see a unit won by a Blood right. Bowl team because I think what they want to see is in 40k unit and AOS unit they want to see people do that hard work of getting a five or ten man thing and actual unit and do yeah. it. Yeah. And they even said you don't have to build a scene for them; you can just put them on that plaque like. And have them all painted well, but we weren't seeing that. People were just copping out, buying the little kill team, buying the little Underworlds thing, yeah. throwing them in unit, um, and they look great. But now, now they got their own category. Yeah, it's um, great. I, I think it's yeah. all, all positive changes so far. Yeah, yeah. I agree. But uh, it looks like mine would would now be in the combined dual diorama category, uh, and yeah, we'll see. If Which I, I think is fine. If I'm not, um, if I'm on pace to not get it done, particularly the base. I might just have to build a base for the Dark Oath guy and, yeah. and single him, but single's always so hard. Um, but it would be AOS single. It'd be AOS 40, single. 40K single is always the ginormous one. It's got the most entries, yeah. but I would argue AOS so single. So many years now. And AOS large. AOS has been winning Slayer Swords. Yeah. Well, Lazarus won I, yeah, okay, last yes, year. Yes, you're right. But oh, the, I got, I got, and I guess the, the, skink, the high elf guy got, got the one. Skink too. one the year before. The, yeah, the skink um, and that um, that gargant in the UK one. Yeah, yeah. So, and, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> AOS, it's just got, well, it's well, got some juice. AOS large, yeah. AOS large people go nuts on because as we've talked about, when you're talking about monsters and centerpiece kits, AOS just has the best yeah. ones. They really do. Every army has one, at yeah. least one, and they're all big and impressive and. The, the amount of detail that goes into it, it's just, it doesn't compare. Because what's, your, what's your, your super heavy, your super large thing for Necrons? It's just Monolith. Nothing exciting yeah, about that. Yeah, Silent King in a, in, a, in a floating thing. It's just um, not as exciting. Well, and, and, then, and then it's your, your Primarchs, which now everybody's done. Yeah. So um, AOS has a wider variety of them, and they're so fantastical that I think that category, AOS large is super hard, or monster, whatever they're calling it now. Mm-hmm. And then 40K single super hard by the sheer volume of they might call it Monster War Machine. That could be right because it's like artillery pieces are called War Machines. Because I think and I think 40k they combined vehicle and, lo- and monster. Yeah, yeah. So mm. be interesting to see. Yeah. Um, I know that the scale category will get more interesting because of Legions Imperials. You have way more models there now. I mean, just look at the number of kits. Mm-hmm. Look at the number of kits they've come out with from all those different individual games, Aeronautica and whatever. That's like. Interesting. All it's now all one game, and they've re-released them all with new packaging, and they're all available now. There's like mm-hmm. there's like a hundred different products yeah. to choose from now. If there's so many, and now they've added all those tanks and all that stuff yeah. that wasn't there before. So I, I think that category stands to, and they got really good uh, advertisement. Yeah. Those last few months of the year, a lot of the big shot painters were doing Legion's Imperialis stuff and showing really fun ways to do them easy because there, there's like a real joy. You get intimidated by those tiny details, but then when you see there's a lot of shortcuts you can take on tiny details because um, it's all about exaggerating contrast on that tiny mm-hmm. scale, uh, but then still making it look like it's supposed to be something huge. Right. Like, uh, So there is an art to it for sure, but I think it got a lot of good plug and I think that category might end up loaded, quietly loaded. Yeah. All of that's exciting. Adepticon in general is always exciting. And we talk about it for the entire year and then mm-hmm. it's always here again. Mm-hmm. And it always ends so quick. It's only five days, and it's it's just too, it's too short. It is, and it's funny, but it is funny, right? Because mm-hmm. like, there's a buzz that first night. Oh yeah. Because like, only the diehards show up that first night. Yep. Right. Everyone who, who was, and we see the same people, and I'm sure people recognize us, right? Like I, they have to. Yeah. Right. Like we've seen these people for ten years in a row now. Yeah. There's a lot of these same people. 
Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, there's there's bathrobe guy. There's yep. yeah, there's techno Viking. There's, there's like, like the stairs. And there's, yeah. like, <laughs> like we see this a lot yeah. of the same people, and even if we don't know them or we've never like really interacted with them, we like we, we recognize each other. Yeah. And so it's like I'm sure there are people there that have seen us multiple years mm-hmm. and are like, oh yeah yeah, there's that guy. I've mm-hmm. seen him before. You know, like that kind of thing. So it's always like the same kind of like, it's a large group, but it's the same group of people that show up on Wednesday nights. Yeah. And so it's always like, there's always like a different feel to that night than, than any other day. Because then like normal people start coming. Right. And weekend Thursday, and all that Thursday locals. And, yeah. Uh, and so like, it's it's definitely the, the same kind of feeling every year on that first day. But then there's always the same kind of feeling the last day. Where it's like, oh man, it's over. The Sunday is so sad. Yeah, and, and Chicago is unforgiving because... Every single Sunday, it's either windy, rainy, or snowing as people are leaving the convention. Yeah, the weather tanks on Sunday. Every yeah. single time. It's yeah. just like, it's just insult, you know, to the, to the, to the wounded, to the wounded, like, oh, the I got to go, sweet. I got to go home now. Yeah. And it's always like, and it's also the worst day of the week because it's, I'm cold and it's wet every single it's time. And, and it, is, yeah. it is so funny. Like, without a fail. <laughs> yeah, well, and you're right. Those, those two moments have the same feel. And even though once you like start heading home, you just want to get home, mm-hmm. it, it's still like you don't want it to end. Yeah. And so you always end up like lying to yourself a bit on Thursday because it's day one officially of the con. You're like, I still got three more days of this. <laughs> but then it's just yeah. over so quick. Someone's in one event, day just zooms by. Yeah. I sat under the escalators and participated in their charity giveaway thing where they were painting the Magnus or whatever it mm-hmm. was. Uh, he let me work on the face. So if anyone goes and looks, uh, you at are their, you're a face painter. I like, am, let's just put that out there. And that always <laughs> and that always that's one of the first things if people yeah. interact with me on my Instagram, they, that always surprises them. Like I hate painting faces, and and I'm just like that's my that's favorite thing. And then that bothers. <laughs> I don't know. Do they but, make like 28 mil scale busts? Because they did, you would knock that out of the park. Thing. You know what I mean? Maybe I should do that. Yeah. Just not assemble the arms and legs of a guy exactly. and just put like them just, on a little pin. Dude, exactly. Because like, like the 40 mil scale bust, they're, like, they're too big. They're too easy. Yeah, I don't want to say easy. They're, the details are big enough where it's like, they, they produce, it's more accessible. Well, they produce you know? some of their own contrast when they're that big. Right. Now, now there's enough stuff casting shadows and shape that I heard those, the, like those European painters who specialize in the busts, who do it for the covers of the paint sets and mm-hmm. all that. They flat, all of them, flat out say the painting the bust and scale figures is easier now we get blown away looking at it because you'll watch what they do with them it's like holy cow yeah so by sheer size it takes time but they're like you don't have to focus as much on the technical or creating illusions as you do with the small ones but you have so much more space that you can get away with inserting all these nuanced Mm -hmm. color filters and um i've really only tried to paint one bust face ever and it was that steampunk lady with the red hair and holding a pistol i never finished her I only painted mm-hmm. her face. Uh, and I actually, I paint faces different now. So I would approach that differently if I went back. But I did paint just the lion's head, Lionel Johnson's head in the hood. Mm-hmm. So yes, I would do that all day if there was just a market for painting 28 mil scale yeah. heads. That'd, that'd be funny though, right? Because it's like, because you because mm-hmm. here's here's your three spots you like. You paint this on every single model. Even if it's not yours. You paint the face. Mm-hmm. You paint like the right peck. Yep. And you do the right shoulder. Yep. That, the musculature there on the right shoulder, it's like... That's your bread butters. That that if that was a bust, yeah. you, you would win that category. Every it gives me like an impression of <laughs> yeah. you know what the model would look like if I were going to finish that one. Yeah. Really about. But, but if you had it at that scale where it was like just tiny instead yeah. of being like you know a, a handful, mm-hmm. you know if this is that little, that'd be that'd be funny. It'd be a funny category. No yep. mini bust. Mini bust. <laughs> yeah, like the mini muffins of yep. of of busts. Yeah, yep. muffins. I could go for a muffin. I think. Now do you prefer. Mini ones are those huge couch size. See, I like every bit of the muffin, but a lot of people like the muffin top. The texture. And I know people will only eat the top of the muffin. So it's like, Thank why, you, why, why right. don't you just make muffin tops? I think they do. But isn't that just a scone? At right, that it's point? like a scone or a squishy cookie. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just not... There's something about a muffin top being attached to the muffin that makes the texture different. Yeah. You know? But regardless... I could Let's eat. go try some out. Yeah. Let's see. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed. Check out our new episodes every Friday at Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Audible, or on Podbean. 
You can also follow myself and Lama on Instagram for more. We are at Hyena Paints Minis and at Lama Paints Minis. Music provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. And as always, we will catch you next time.